Hollywood, one of the most spoken about places on planet Earth. The place where so many desire to be, yet once they get there, things can change. After years of striving for a path of riches, stardom, and being adored by everyone, some people start to go down other paths, some choose to disappear, some are unfairly casted away, and some, some choose to go down a path of crime, pain and suffering. Also known as featuring in the DC Extended Universe. Now this video is an investigation. I've tried recording this around three times now. I even got to the latest stages of finishing an edit for this video. But then I realized that there was even more stuff that I haven't uncovered and unpacked. This is an absolute iceberg of a video. And I implore you to come into this with an open mind, ready to have some thoughts and feelings and information put into your brains, which you probably did not need to know. But obviously you're going to sit through a 50 minute video because you're probably procrastinating from doing any form of work that you're actually you're meant be to do. Me. So yes, I've basically come to the conclusion after researching everything here today that yes, the Ezra Miller allegations are far worse than we originally thought. And I know a lot of you are going to say, well, how's that even possible? I mean, at this point, I think everybody has seen all of the things that have gone on with Ezra Miller and what they've been basically getting up to in the last year. And yes, I would agree with you at this point of time, things do seem absolutely insane and to a point of where it could not get any weirder or any worse. And I have to say, please, for the love of God, just sit tight and watch this entire video. Because when I say this video is going to go into some deep, weird routes, I, I, I really do mean that. And I hope you can come into this video with like an open mind because we're going to be exploring some paths which I genuinely didn't think that we'd be exploring. Like this video, honestly, has gone down so many different routes at this point and I am just so utterly confused. And I, I still, I honestly don't really know what my conclusive opinion is and what we're gonna do about any of this. But alas, allow me to introduce you to Ezra Miller. I got assaulted in this bar twice in a row. I filmed myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. To be honest with you, I feel like the worst part about this entire Ezra Miller situation is the fact that they genuinely invested their money into NFT crypto art. I mean, I hope that's going well for you, buddy. I truly do. But yes, this is Ezra Miller, a millionaire American actor known for featuring in films such as the Fantastic Beast franchise, which to be honest with you, um, they, well, they, they, they weren't actually that fantastic. <laughs> But despite all of the movies and all of the fame and all of the money that Ezra has kind of come into in the last 10 years, obviously Ezra has been absolutely in the last two years filled to the brim with accusations, allegations, so many people coming out against them. And basically at this point, the entire world have turned against Ezra Miller. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not really shocked by that because at this point of time, the public reception of Ezra Miller is that they are basically the Doomslayer of Hawaii. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand now, yes. But it was worth the risk, I assure you. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into the first situation in this timeline. Allow me to introduce you to Iceland. 2020. Learn it? Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Whoa, bro, 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 bro. fight? Now, I have blurred out what actually happened in that video, but I think at this point, a lot of you have probably already seen this clip. It was a very, very popular clip that surrounded the internet around two years ago of where Ezra visibly chokes and pins down a girl. And I remember this clip going around, and honestly, a lot of people were just very, very confused. Now, I first remember seeing this incident and genuinely thinking to myself, well, but well, it's got to be more context to this because for one at this point of time, Ezra Miller was like a, a beloved actor. Like this person was somebody that is just known for pretty much just being one of the best aspects of the DCEU. And now I know there aren't really many good aspects of the DCEU at this point, but they definitely were one of the more positive aspects and they were absolutely adored for some of the films that they had been in. So I started to think to myself, well, why would they go ahead and ruin that? Why would they be 
wearing a dressing gown in Iceland giving their best rendition of Rey Mysterio. It made no sense and I just thought there has to be more context. But seemingly to this day, the full provided context hasn't actually come out about this situation. And actually, this is a pretty recurring pattern with every single incident involving Ezra Miller. There's usually a big scary headline, and then there's more context or more allegations. And at this point with the Iceland chokeslam Rey Mysterio incident, most people think it's real, some people think it's a joke, but some think it was actually a setup. Now, I know a lot of people at this point are probably going to be thinking, oh my god, is he making a video where he defends Ezra Miller? No, I'm not doing that. Because to be honest with you, based on my own personal research on this one specific incident, I personally think that yes, this was a real thing. Ezra Miller clearly went overboard, lashed out. And the reason I think this is because of an article that comes from Viarity, who are a media company that just like the Rolling Stones, pop up quite a lot during this story. According to a source at the bar, the altercation took place after the individual identified as Miller was confronted by a group of eager fans who were quite pushy. Things then escalated, with Miller losing their temper with one woman in particular. Procchio's staff escorted the actor, who was upset and angry, off the premises following the incident. So yes, in this particular situation, I absolutely do not think that Ezra Miller was justified in their actions. I think that, yes, as a celebrity, because I'm a big famous celebrity? No, I, I, but I can imagine as a celebrity, it's probably a little bit irritating when somebody is very pushy. Can I have a photo? Can I have a photo? Yeah, I can imagine that's very annoying. But at the same time, pushy people, annoying people, it never really justifies uh, physically assaulting them, you know? But as I said previously, obviously, uh, this whole thing is a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more strange than what's actually been shown in the media, according to people on Twitter. And I know that's probably the most mentally ill state that I've ever made. Because Twitter is the worst application on planet Earth. Ezra Miller accused of harassing women in Germany, an Iceland choking victim breaks her silence. Yes, uh, 2022 definitely has not been the year for Ezra Miller. If anything, it's been the complete opposite of that. This year has been absolute carnage. Nothing but non-stop articles. Even yesterday, at the time of recording this video, there has been more and more speculation about Ezra Miller being banned from being in the DCU, their film being scrapped, despite it being filmed. Basically, this year has been the cancellation and ruining of Ezra Miller, and I'm just going to show you in a five-second compilation to what's happened. So yeah, um, a lot of things have happened, and we're going to start off with uh, the thing I just mentioned before of the original person from the first incident coming out and actually giving their, I guess, rendition of what actually happened between them and Ezra. Soon after the incident, Variety spoke with the woman Miller assaulted. She recently confirmed that her comments could be printed for an article. She asked to remain anonymous out of concern for her privacy as she's telling her story publicly for the first time. Now, even when you first read that, it's naturally a little bit sketchy. Anybody who wants to come out with their story, whether you think it's real or not real or a setup, should be able to publicly have their name attached to a story without facing any type of harassment. In the blurry video, Miller is seen confronting the woman, who is smiling and waving her arms as she walks towards them and asking, do you want to fight? Is that what you do? Now, this is where a lot of people have basically been speculating that this whole thing was a setup, that basically this woman went up to Ezra, kind of initiated a, a, a fake fight, and they kind of got it on camera and basically just publicly slandered Ezra by making this fake thing actually seem real, when in my opinion, when you look at the video, I, I, I don't think this is um, a, a fake video, especially when you look at the reactions from the people around the, the, the two people who are having the altercation. Personally, for me, I definitely think this is a real incident, a scary incident, and it's quite mind-blowing that this was just wiped under the carpet for around three or two years. 
After Miller grabs her neck, she lets out an audible gasp. The person filming the video stopped to intervene. Variety is confirmed. According to free sources, the woman had been speaking to Miller at the bar prior to the quarrel. She said that she inquired about the actor's feet, visible in flip-flops. After noticing some wounds, which Miller explained were battle scars from a fight, uh, yeah, this is a, a pretty reoccurring uh, pattern throughout all of these uh, incidents. There are just some some very strange quotes. Um, not really sure what that means, but yeah, we'll continue. It says, after discussing how they got them, she began to walk away, but turned around and joked, but just so you know, I could take you in a fight. Mira replied, you really want to fight? And the woman told them to meet her in the smoking area in two minutes. Eventually, Miller confronted her outside the bar, and I thought it was just fun and games, but then it wasn't. Now, you could even take this as two things. You could say the most popular opinion, which of course is uh, Ezra Miller, is clearly absolutely unhinged and probably needs some form of help. Now, personally, that's the one I'm, you know, leaning towards because, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I haven't really seen enough evidence to suggest suggest that uh, it's anything other than that, but you know, there is, you know, an alternative there. As I said earlier, is a deep dive in this video, and people out there are basically alleging that this entire thing was staged, and basically Ezra was set up to look really, really bad, and there are some posts here that I'm showing right now that very much do suggest that, and this is a theory a lot of people out there really do believe that this thing of Ezra choke slamming somebody was all a big setup. But to be honest with you fellas, uh, I, I personally don't buy into this one. Now, yes, there are screenshots and there are quotes out there basically saying that, yeah, they were messing around beforehand and stuff like that. But personally, I, I, I just think that there are too many ifs and buts and yeah, and yeah, they did this and they did that. There is a video. There is a video and as I said, the person seems very distressed in the video and the person recording does get the camera. Maybe they were planning to mess with Ezra, but I, I, I don't think that they made Ezra give their best rendition of Rey Mysterio. But I guess the main thing a few people think this is fake is mainly because the incident wasn't actually reported to the police and no injuries were reported. But ultimately, just because there was an assault or a fight, whatever you want to call it, doesn't mean that it was always going to be reported to the police. So many people getting physical altercations and don't go to the police because for the most part, the police are extremely unreliable, especially when it comes to cases of assault. So no, I do not think this thing is fake. And this isn't the first time Ezra has been involved in some form of controversy in Iceland. No, 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 no. They've been basically doing loads of different things in Iceland. In fact, it pretty much does seem that Ezra was being full fucking Doom Slayer mode in Iceland just as much as they were in Hawaii. Miller, then 27, also started to show a different volatile side to their personality, one that began to concern Icelanders. There was always something with Ezra, said Carlos Rainier, then a bartender at Prickio... I, sorry, I, I cannot pronounce that I, I deeply apologize. In an area in Iceland, a pub located at the heart of this very nice place in Iceland, they basically said that there was two altercations involving Miller, and the first was a heated argument between Miller and a male patron that began as banter, but ended up in the actor putting the man in a chokehold and later slapping him. Rainer, who broke up the fight, says Miller later apologized, and the other patron quickly shugged it off as a joke. The actor was allowed to continue frequenting the bar. Now, a lot of people have said, well, if this was real, uh, why would they allow him to uh, stay at the bar? Well, this is... To be honest with you, pub culture in a lot of places in Europe, fights do just happen when people are drunk. But obviously, based on what you've seen here and everything else that we're going to be discussing today, there is clearly a continuous pattern of volatile and violent reactions from Ezra Miller in a lot of different incidents. Whether you think they're justified or not, you can clearly see that Ezra does react to things very easily and reacts to things Typically, with their fishy cups, they uh, they like they, they like a punch up. Basically, um, that's not a justification. That's an observation. But the next part of this story is another account that does come from Germany. As I said earlier, Ezra's uh, Doom Slayer arc in Europe very much did not just stay in Iceland. But this part of the story is where things really do start to get a little bit strange. I'm just gonna you know read this account and then go further into this. It's a sentiment echoed by another woman, Nadia. She requested that only her first name be used out of concern for her privacy, who alleges in an interview with Variety 
popularity that after a warm two-year friendship with Miller, mostly via text message, the actor came to her Berlin apartment later one evening in February 2022 at her invitation. They hadn't seen each other since they had a consensual sexual encounter in 2020, but after a friendly interaction, Miller's mood sharply turned when she told them that they couldn't smoke inside her home. That set them off, Nadia said. I asked them to leave about 20 times, maybe more. They started insulting me. I'm a transphobic piece of shit. I'm a word which I'm not actually going to name, but you can probably guess what. It begins with N and uh, aligns with a certain political party that originated in the 1930s. It became so stressful for me. They were going around my house, looking at everything, touching everything, spreading tobacco leaves on the floor. It felt disgusting and very intrusive. After roughly an hour of pleading, Nadia said she finally convinced Miller to leave once she called the police. The incident left her deeply disturbed. While she is clear that she never found at risk of sexual assault that night in her apartment, she believed the actor could somehow attack me physically. I totally felt unsafe, she said. Five people, two friends, a woman's right advocate, a German social worker, and Nadia's German lawyer told Variety that they spoke with Nadia soon after the alleged encounter with Miller and corroborated her account. In April, Nadia filed a criminal complaint about her experience, which Variety has confirmed with the German state prosecutor's office in Berlin. While the prosecutor was investigating a charge of trespassing against Miller, their office says that it has discontinued its proceedings since the actor is no longer in Germany. Now, I've seen this story absolutely everywhere. This is a very, very popular talking point when it comes to Ezra, and I do want to tread very carefully here because obviously I don't want to dismiss anybody's experiences, yet at the same time, I cannot ignore the fact that I have seen screenshot images, uh, I guess contradictory statements, things that just make me a little bit concerned and I would feel extremely disingenuous if I didn't share this with you. I found some part to the story which honestly does just make me feel a little bit confused. I'm for one confused to why this wasn't in the media articles because there has been a claim against Ezra and I think they have the full right to defend themselves yet at the same time it is strange that some of the evidence and contradictory statements out there haven't really been mentioned even if you don't believe them. People have dug up a lot of things to actually suggest that at this point of time in February 2022, Ezra was not even in Germany. They were in America, according to these people. There are a lot of screenshots here about Ezra basically being in America with their friends working on music, and that kind of shows you that, yeah, there is some suspicious shit going on here. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to just come on here and outright dismiss somebody's allegations and I'm not going to do that, but you can't deny there is some weird stuff going on here, but also mainly down to the fact that if Ezra was at a film festival, surely there would be some photos of them, but I could not find any photos of Ezra at this film festival. A world-renowned actor not getting in photos when there were other actors getting in photos? To me, it just doesn't really make much sense, especially when you apply it to the fact that Ezra isn't really camera shy. I mean, they record themselves getting assaulted for NFT fucking crypto art. I think they don't really mind the cameras. And I do just want to say, I'm not trying to be dismissive of these allegations. I'm, I'm merely kind of just like, I, th I feel like I need to explore every single side here, especially when there is seemingly some screenshots and evidence to suggest other things to that article. I think I wouldn't be doing my true due dil due di due dil I can't say the word due diligence if I didn't show these screenshots because they are suspicious, yet at the same time, you have to ask, why would Viarity make this up? Why would they post this article? It says the police discontinued what was happening with Ezra because they were no longer in Germany at that time. So we've got all of these claims from fairly reputable sources like Viarity. They are a massive media company. And then we've got all of these screenshots about how Ezra was allegedly making music with their friends in America, and it is a little bit confusing. Because what if Ezra actually was just in America? What's going on here? Now, I'm not going to say whether they were or whether they weren't, because to be honest with you, there is a lot of suspicious information there and a lot of suspicious screenshots, yet at the same time, 
Why would they make this article? Why would the, the police seemingly, according to the article, say that they were doing an investigation and they just couldn't do it anymore because Ezra was no longer in Germany? Why would that happen? Yet at the same time, I, I could not actually find any evidence to suggest that Ezra was in Germany. Surely there would be one or two photos of that time. Surely there would be a photo at the, at the film festival, as I said. So yes, it is just a little bit confusing and that is a constant trend throughout the rest of this video but fellas after everything at this point you're probably thinking well well surely the allegations can't get worse and worse and worse uh i'm here to say um have i ever told you a story a little story about ezra miller things never are what they seem they're always a little bit worse and allow me to introduce you to march 2022 the Forbidden Law of Ezra Miller. The Flash and Fantastic Beast star Ezra Miller has been arrested. Hawaii County Police Department arrested and charged Miller with disorderly conduct and harassment following an incident in a karaoke bar in Honolulu on Sunday night. Now, this is one of the most popular stories when it comes to Ezra. This is the one where everybody's kind of like, oh my God, they are kind of losing their mind. And I think somebody needs to uh, step in. And uh, Warner Brothers, I think maybe the Flash movie might not need to come out. A lot of people basically at this point were like, yeah, uh, things are very unhinged pretty much. And I honestly would agree with you. Flash actor arrested on Hawaii after incident at karaoke bar. And man, you've really just got to wonder yourself, why is Ezra looking so smug in this photo? Like, they've been arrested, but you, you, you think they've just won a prize or something, or won, won something on one of those little grabber machines or something, because this is how I look when I'm pretty happy. But they've just been arrested, which makes me think, I mean, they either know that they're just going to pay the bail and get out on a free, probably that, or maybe maybe there is a little bit of a joker level of insanity going on here but yes according to this article ezra miller apparently attacked multiple people because they were doing karaoke in a karaoke bar Huh? According to police, the arrest stemmed from an incident at a karaoke bar on Silver Street Sunday. The 29-year-old was allegedly yelling obscenities and becoming agitated whilst people began singing karaoke. At one point, police say Miller grabbed the microphone from a 23-year-old woman who was mid-song, and the police also said that Miller later lunged at a 32-year-old bloke playing darts. Both of these actions led to disorderly conduct and harassment offences. The bar owner asked Miller to calm down several times, but to no avail, according to the police, and Miller was apparently arrested, charged, and released after paying $500 bail. And again, I am just so, so unbelievably confused to what actually is spurring all of this behavior, because as I said earlier, pretty much up until 2019, there there really um wasn't anything uh, negative in the media about Ezra Miller. If anything, up until 2022, Ezra was an absolutely adored person in the Hollywood industry, and it makes you think what has spurred them into going on this doomslayer rampage? What is the cause of this terrible pattern of behavior? Is it an ego that it's just gotten completely out of check? Is it somebody that's just completely lost their fucking marbles? Probably a combination of both. Or is there this grand conspiracy that is actually against Ezra Miller? But then you just have to ask the question of why? Like, seriously, why? Why would Hollywood conspire against Ezra? I, I honestly do not understand why that would be a, a, a real thing unless they wanted to, I don't know, recast The Flash or something. But to be honest with you, I think Warner Bros. would just be like, all right, bye, we're never going to speak to you again because look at their treatment of Henry Cavill. They've seemingly just completely ignored the main actor for Superman and have just basically just pretended he doesn't exist. So why would they not just do the same thing to Ezra Miller? I, I honestly don't think that this big theory about everything being against Ezra really makes sense. Now, there definitely is a lot of disinformation out there about Ezra, yet at the same time, I'm not going to deny that there has been a continuous pattern of shitty behavior. A Hawaii judge granted a couple's request for temporary restraining order against Ezra Miller. The couple filed a petition for a temporary restraining order on Tuesday, alleging that Miller burst into their bedroom and threatened them in Hilo, a small town on the Big Island. The petition also accused Ezra of stealing some of their belongings, including a passport and wallet. 
Firstly, I do have to say, Ezra, why can't you just be like a normal celebrity and just, I don't know, maybe just go chill on a beach or something? But secondly, as I said earlier, not everything is uh, how it seems in all of these articles because it does get a little bit suspicious when you look and find out that actually the restraining order was apparently dropped. So the question is, is uh, what's actually going on here? Did they have a falling out? But usually when you fall out with somebody, you, you don't just go and get a random restraining order. So I'm a little bit confused. As I said earlier, I definitely think that there is a lot of misinformation out there. Well, information that necessarily doesn't have provided context, because there definitely has been cases of where Ezra has faced some form of uh, abuse, hatred, bigotry, and they've reacted in a physical manner. Personally, I think in that scenario, absolutely fine, but there is no smoke without fire. I do not think that is the case in absolutely every single incident. I do not think that there is a worldwide organization plotting against this person. And honestly, I think the most balmy and wild thing about this entire situation is that, as I showed you earlier, they were arrested, and rather than just being like, you know what, yeah, just, just take me in, officer, take me in, no, they, they were like, I filmed myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. And I think that genuinely is one of the most fucking unhinged statements I have ever heard in the history of making this YouTube channel. Now in this clip, Ezra has claimed that they spat in somebody's face because the person that they were speaking to admitted that they were a horrible person aligned to a political party from the 1930s and the 1940s. And to be honest with you, I'm not gonna just come on here and outright deny that. As I said, I, I don't think this human being has uh, never had an experience with bigotry, especially when the person is non-binary. I do not think that Ezra Miller goes on a day-to-day -day basis without facing some form of hatred. And if you're going to be hateful towards this human being's gender identity because of their physical and emotional actions, just realize, I saw a tweet that put this in a good rap the other day, that means that you are pretty much saying that you will only respect human rights if a human being is nice and good to you. People also have the same gender identity as Ezra Miller. So by you doing that, you are also saying to these people, oh, you know, you may like me now and respect me, but if I annoy you, you're no longer going to respect me as a human being. And obviously, that is mental. So please, do not associate this human being being non-binary with their actions, because that's just fucking stupid and delusional. And to me, it just says that you don't actually care about any of these accusations, and it just says to me that you are trying to just platform your hatred in kind of like a Trojan horse. But going back to Ezra saying in this situation that they were basically, I guess, reacting to bigotry, I guess, uh, fighting in some form of self-defense, I don't doubt that that has very much happened, but how many times can I attribute that to every single situation? Are all of these things self-defense? Because personally, in my opinion, I think the odds of that are probably very, very low. Which only gets proven further when around a month later, Ezra was arrested again in Hawaii on suspicion of assault. And yes, it's just as bad as you could possibly imagine. Miller became irate after being asked to leave a get-together at a big island home and threw a chair, hitting a woman in the forehead, according to the news release from the Hawaii Police Department. And there was even a leaked phone call that came out in this situation where a person on the phone pretty much described everything that Ezra had done. And, and yeah, it, it does make this situation seem even more mental and even more disturbing. I have Ezra Miller at my house right now. We have been offering our home to him and he came into our room and he's threatening us right now. He hit me in the head with a chair and I'm bleeding. Oh, do you head. need medical attention? I, no, I don't need medical attention. I need the police here Yeah, now. so how old is he? I don't know. He's in his 30s. He's in his and 30s. I'm 26. Okay, they're driving. So. If you see them on the road, they're leaving. They're trying to leave our premises right now. They're driving away in a gray car, a gray truck. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, okay, that's two different things. Is it a right. truck or is it a car? It's a gray truck. And they are locally right now, they are located in Hilo as well. Ezra Miller is the person that is the one that was in our home. 
and he threw this chair at me. He assaulted me. He's in our home, and we've offered up. We have been here very nice to him, and he did this to us tonight. Now, that call is obviously extremely tough to hear. Like, it, it does sound that this human being is in a lot of distress. It sounds that something horrible has happened. But again, and I'm, I'm not dismissing this, but I have to bring the stuff up. Because I'm making a video about this, and if I don't, if I just pretend to ignore that I haven't seen these things, I, I think I would be being extremely disingenuous and extremely dishonest. But there have been, yet again, more people kind of disputing what actually happened in this situation and saying that a lot of context has been removed. According to these screenshots, apparently a friend of Ezra's called Anna Rosa in leaked DMs apparently said that Ezra was actually in this situation protecting Anna from Anna's ex. Now, apparently, again, according to screenshots, Anna has children with this human being, and uh, apparently this call was made to pretty much frame Ezra and Anna in this terrible way, so basically, Anna would lose the rights to having her children with her. Now, I know that sounds absolutely wild, and you're probably thinking, well, why are we suddenly in the fucking Jeremy Kyle show? I, I know, but these screenshots exist, these claims do exist, and there are even some weirder things here when you look at the fact that the ex does actually have a lot of criminal court cases to do with domestic abuse and family. So yes, things are getting suspicious here. There are things kind of adding up and making me think, well, maybe there was some context here. Now, again, I, 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 I can't just say, oh, because one person's claiming this thing, that means the other thing's wrong and then vice versa. An incident has clearly happened here, and I don't know if this is Ezra Miller's PR team just coming into these things and just kind of trying to make it look a little bit better. Honestly, given that it's Hollywood, I really, really wouldn't be shocked about that. And also, shock horror, a friend would defend another person. Because you could say that, yes, this ex is a terrible human being, yet at the same time, Ezra may have just lashed out in this place with no provocation, no actual reasoning to doing it other than, yes, Yes, they are a terrible human being, and in the eyes of the law, that is still assault. But I, I, I really don't know. I am basically just becoming a, a conspiracy theorist at this point, but I just wanted to put this information out there to kind of just show you that there is more things happening here, uh, apparently. The reason I'm making this video isn't to downplay accusations. The reason I'm making this video isn't to say Ezra Miller's innocent. I think Ezra Miller has definitely done a lot of terrible things. And to be honest with you, I, 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 I don't know if Ezra Miller is redeemable in the slightest. Yet at the same time, I'm making this video to show that there is more, I guess, than meets the eye. That sounded really cliche, but... Yeah, but it gets even weirder when you actually go further and see that around 12 hours after this, Ezra pleaded no contest to a disorderly conduct case from a previous month. They paid a fine and were told to stay away from Margarita Village in Hilo, and then they were charged with harassment after the police said that the actor grabbed a mic from a singing woman and lunged at a man playing darts. And obviously, that goes back to the previous thing that was going on here. So to the people saying that Ezra is completely innocent, I mean, they've been charged. They, they, they've literally been charged. But that isn't the end of this situation regarding Anna and Ezra. And trust me, it gets even weirder involving this headline that you've probably already seen. And we will get into that later in this video. But yes, after everything we've covered so far, we are now up to June 2022. Now this is where things begin to go really, really serious. The allegations we're now about to deal with obviously involve grooming. There have been a lot of serious accusations out there about Ezra Miller, so I want to take it more serious. Obviously, all the other stuff before is obviously serious, but this is where it gets into territory of Oh, 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 this is, this is really bad. And that involves the parents of who goes by Gibson on Instagram, who accused Ezra Miller of grooming their child 
Gibson. Apparently, legal documents show that Gibson met Ezra in 2016 when Ezra was 23 and they were 12, and the two became friends, with Ezra flying them out to London in 2017 to visit a studio that they were recording on, and I guess at that point of time, they would have been around the age of 13. There's a lot of serious claims in this article, and these all directly come from the parents of Gibson. Some claims are such as uh, Ezra allegedly provided this person with drugs, alcohol, and apparently Ezra is even the reason to Gibson leaving and dropping out of school. Yet at the same time, a lot of people have actually disputed that by saying it wasn't school, it was actually college. Now, I do think those two are very different things because dropping out of school is obviously a very silly and serious thing, whereas college, I, I think, is a little less serious, you know? That is extended education, whereas school, in my opinion, is where you are growing up as a child, it is where you are truly becoming who you are going to be as an adult, you know? You're growing up with, around people of your age, and I think it's a very vital and important thing for every human being to go through. Not necessarily because you're learning fucking mathematics and literature, because you are developing as a human being at a young age around other people at the same age as you. I don't think a developing child should be friends with grown adults because they've developed, they've experienced life of an adult nature and obviously a 13 year old or 12 year old has not experienced that and is still a child. The article then states that basically the parents flew to Ezra's home in January 2022 to get Gibson, and they discovered that Gibson didn't have their driving license, car keys, bank card, and just in general items that you would require to navigate your life independently. And they even go to say that they found bruises on Gibson's body, which they allege that Ezra caused. But then it gets even more insane when you take a look and see that Gibson on their Instagram responds regularly to these allegations. Gibson's main response says that they want to acknowledge the tragedy of the narrative of the general public and assumptions made on behalf by their family and friends regarding stability and otherwise. They basically then go on to say that Ezra's their comrade and that they've basically been there through absolutely everything everything together. And you know, after this, my first instant thought as somebody that deals with speaking about predators quite often on my YouTube channel, well, naturally, in a lot of situations, a victim obviously does not realize what is happening to them until many, many years in the future. Some instantly realize it, but a lot of people, that's very different because they face things such as Stockholm Syndrome. And just in general, I think it's not nice to realize that you have been taken advantage of, abused, and manipulated. But then, and after this, I thought, well, I'll do further research, you know, I'll look into this. And I looked it up and there has been other accusations on Gibson's sides that basically Gibson's parents are allegedly extremely abusive and just in general were terrible to Gibson. People were alleging that they were extremely transphobic, did not basically accept Gibson for their own gender identity, just didn't accept Gibson for, I guess, not wanting to align, I guess, with their family's rules, regulations, stuff like that and pretty much people are saying that Ezra saved Gibson in this situation and actually took them in and was uh, I guess somebody just there to house Gibson and make them feel actually accepted again this is just another accusation I don't really think we're gonna work out what's happened here until the near future there's been a lot of speculation that this case could absolutely explode in the near future and there has been so much different uh, words and arguments arguments and debates from both different sides here, and I think it's just fair to say that yes, this situation is absolutely fucking mental. Now, personally, what I would say from this situation is that I always do find it suspicious when somebody who was a grown adult met a child and then became friends of that child, especially when that child got to the age of around 18. To me, I've always found things like that suspicious, very much seems like a groomer sort of trait. Well, no, it is a groomer trait. And yeah, I can understand why people would call Ezra a groomer in this situation, you know? I don't think somebody in their late 20s, to be honest, has any business with a young 18-year-old, let alone somebody below the ages of that, you know? And again, there have been accusations about uh, Ezra just in general trying to be 
a family friend to Gibson and just trying to help them out. But from what I can see and take here, I, I don't know. It's, it's very suspicious. Even if the parents are absolutely horrific, I think there can always be two wrongs in a situation and actually no rights in these things. And to be honest with you, I do just feel bad for Gibson regardless of what the conclusion is here, you know? Because Gibson, in my opinion, either way, is a victim. They're either a victim of Ezra Miller or they're a victim of their parents or, in the worst case scenario, both. But Gibson themselves even made more posts, as I said, showing horrible messages from their parents in this situation, where they were basically using religious teachings against Gibson, and it kind of only backs the allegations of them being abusive towards Gibson, and it only does make me feel further concerned, because I, I, I don't think a grown adult in their late 20s has any business with an 18-year-old, so I'm concerned on that front, but I'm also concerned that their other only alternative is an abusive family, allegedly, that will simply not accept them for who they are as a human being. And after this, Gibson did put out more statements, basically stating that they don't have a phone because of a personal conviction, and Ezra isn't controlling them, and they're pretty much just absolutely disappointed in their parents. And there was even another comment stating that Ezra only knew Gibson at 12 years old because Ezra was actually, allegedly, helping Gibson's family, and they had only personally had a long time with Gibson until 2022. But even then, that's really weird. I, 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 I know it technically doesn't break any laws, but a 29-year-old has no business with an 18-year-old, you know? I don't even think a 26-year-old has business with an 18. They, honestly, it probably goes lower than that. There is just, I don't think there is any excuse for a 29-year-old finding a need to be a friend. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but what I'm trying to say here is that I think the connection between them is probably a little bit inappropriate. I don't think that they should be close, personal, and seemingly living together. I think that is pretty inappropriate. But then again, you can say, well, you know, it's an unfortunate situation because they were just trying to help Gibson escape their abusive family. And maybe that is true, you know, maybe. But then you could also make the assumption about, well, well, they're a millionaire. Surely they could just house Gibson in a separate place and, and provide therapy and stuff like that, because that is actually a pretty valid point. So there are a lot of contradictory statements in this situation. And personally, I think both sides are probably in the wrong. But fellas, despite absolutely everything we've said today, the rabbit hole just continues to get bigger. I mean, you can fit a fucking giant bunny in this hole at this point because it just gets more and more mental. 12-year-old granted order of protection against Ezra... Mi now, now, I'm just going to live react to this because obviously, um, that's mental, that's absolutely insane, but yet again... It goes deeper. On Wednesday, a mother and her 12-year-old child traveled to their local courthouse in Greenfield, Massachusetts, and were granted a temporary harassment prevention order against Ezra after alleging that the actor menaced their family one evening in the downstairs neighbor home and acted inappropriately towards the non-binary youngster. Now, Ezra storming into people's flats and homes seems to be this recurring pattern, which I've seen quite a lot. And honestly, you do have to say, well, well th again, there is no fucking smoke without fire. I mean, how many times can this allegedly happen uh, as a fake story? I mean, that that is incredibly suspicious. But then it goes on to basically say some other very, very suspicious things and some suspicious quotes such as, I've talked extensively with your child and they have a lot of power to them. At one point, you're going to realize that you don't have any control over them anymore. They're an elevated being and they would be lucky to have somebody like me guide them. Obviously, uh, if that quote's real, that is fucking mental. That is uh, insane uh, to a degree of where what is going on? This is wild. Now, I don't believe any of this is on camera. And again, they are just allegations. But obviously, uh, just to see them in print alone on a, on, a, on a reputable media site, very suspicious. But then it just gets even more mental when you realize that um, a lot of, but I say a lot, a, a few people, again, at the bottom of the pit that I've reached and researched, uh, are basically alleging that this is all fake, and this is all a grand conspiracy where Ezra is actually be, being plotted against. And as I said earlier, I don't think that there is a, a world organization trying to stop Ezra, but apparently 
There now is. These people are saying here that the father of Gibson has pretty much paid these people off to come out with these allegations and they have provided these screenshots which just make everything seem even more insane, you know? Like, absolutely mental. Because people, as I just said, think that um, in order for Gibson's father to get, I guess, um, the Gibson pack, is now just going around and paying people to spread horrible misinformation about Isra and paint them as a groomer, which obviously is a, a wild accusation in itself, and there are these screenshots here to kind of suggest this. And as I said, I'm not trying to dispute, like, an, a, abuse and stuff, but when you've got so many pieces of information which just aren't appearing in these media articles, and I found them, I, I, I would feel very disingenuous if I didn't at least show you guys this and ask for your opinion because I'm just trying to unpack all of this just as you are, you know? If anything, this is like an open-ended investigation that we're currently doing together, you know? I haven't come to a conclusion yet other than, yeah, in a lot of situations, Ezra is clearly irredeemable and I do think that a 29-year-old has absolutely no business with an 18-year-old even if their intent isn't something, like, terrible. The maturity gap between a 29-year-old and an 18 year old is insane. But again, it just gets even more mental. I feel like I've said mental around 60,000 times during this recording, but yes, another situation unveiled involving more allegations surrounding Ezra and once again, children. A headline came out saying that Ezra is housing three young children and their mother where there is drugs and weapons and that apparently a one-year-old child was playing with a weapon in her mouth. Fellas, uh, no, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, video's over. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next uh, James Charles video. We're gonna go back to the original stuff. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, but seriously, this is where things start to get really weird, and this is where things start to kind of add up. Now, I do have to say again, before we go any further, that yes, everything I'm saying today is under fair use, and it is pure opinions and not facts, and these are all my personal opinions. Legally, I need to say that, that yes, everything I am saying, my friends, is my own research and is my own personal opinion, and I advise you go look up everything yourselves, you go read articles, you go look up and find information, because that's what we're doing today. This is personal an opinion and just basically an investigation of my own under fair use. But yes, basically, I want to take you back to the headline I mentioned earlier involving Anna and the chair and Ezra, because obviously there were some leaked messages where Anna apparently said that Ezra was simply protecting Anna from an alleged abusive ex. Apparently, Anna and this abusive ex were having a dispute over the children and there were leaked court cases apparently showing domestic abuse charges or at least domestic abuse cases with this, again, alleged abuser. Now, this takes us all the way to this headline here, because apparently this whole thing is actually a complete lie, and apparently the only reason that Anna, who was apparently the person in this headline, is now living with Ezra with her children is because that apparently Ezra was pretty much just trying to save her from an abusive household and an alleged abusive ex. Now, obviously, again, I'm not sure how many facts there are here, but if the person is saying this, I mean, what am I meant to believe here? It's obviously very suspicious, yet at the end of the day, I am confused to why none of this has at least been shown in media articles, because I think this is important, whether you agree with it, believe it, or don't believe it. And I understand a lot of you are probably wondering where that big chunk of text actually comes from. Well, Anna, again, the person in this situation, apparently had an interview done, which has now suspicious been removed, where Anna apparently dismissed absolutely everything, and it just says here that according to Anna, Ezra was simply just helping them in an unfortunate, terrible situation. And when I first saw this, I did think, well, okay, but then you've got to ask the question of who actually filed the report of the kidnapping? Where did the headline come from? And then that moves us back to the suspicious ex, who was allegedly abusive and allegedly has a record of domestic abuse cases. But it also throws us back to Chase Iron Eyes, the father of Gibson. Yes, everything in this entire mental plotline adds up.
There are a lot of messages out there basically alleging things such as Ezra being fucked if they don't cooperate with Chase, and a lot of it is extremely confusing and extremely suspicious. Now, I know a lot of people will say, why are you defending Ezra? Why are you doing that? I'm not doing that. I am merely providing information that I have found, and the fact of the matter is, is that there is a lot of random stuff out there, and I acknowledge this could all be complete and utter bollocks. Yet at the same time, I was saying with Ezra, there is no smoke without fire, and I stand by that. I definitely think Ezra has done a lot of bad, irredeemable things, but at the same time, I have to apply that to a thing of where there is so many messages, so much information of, yes, there is no smoke without fire. But I'm not going to turn my head at really weird things, like this diagram here, of where it's a tweet of somebody saying that Chase Ionines' team are in contact with the Rolling Stone, which I I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because the Rolling Stone did do an article about Ezra with some serious accusations. And then there was another tweet where they got in contact with a email that Chase put out. And then Chase apparently, I don't know if this is true, this is just a screenshot in this article, but apparently Chase responded with the email to a Rolling Stone journalist. And then obviously, yes, there were journalists posting articles for the Rolling Stones about Ezra. And I just can't help but think that is a little bit weird. I mean, maybe a journalist company is just going to happily work with somebody who they are thinking is in the right here, because to be honest with you, I wouldn't doubt that Rolling Stones or whoever the journalist is thinks that they're doing the right thing. Maybe they are. I don't know. But again, I am just finding a lot of this to be very weird, especially with everything we've looked at, but also with taglines such as trash to flash and an email with literally trash to flash. I don't know. That just seems to be a little bit of a weird way to take it when you are, I guess, uh, saying that this person has abused and pretty much just kidnapped your own child. I just can't help but think that, that having a hashtag is just a little strange. I don't know. Am I being weird here? To me, everything we've gone through just screams sus and weird. So what I'm trying to get at here is this article is written by the Rolling Stones, and this article was obviously written about Anna, who has apparently come out and said that the article is a lie. And who provided that information? Well, based on what we've seen here, I can only come to some conclusion, in my opinion, that it has to be Chase. And why would he do that? Well, obviously, it all comes down to Gibson. I think Chase wants to do absolutely anything he can to get back Gibson. Whether you agree with that or not, it's clear, in my personal opinion, that Chase is doing everything to incriminate Ezra in order to somehow get back Gibson. Which is actually really weird because it's actually not that difficult to <laughs> incriminate Ezra. In fact, I think it's actually probably one of the more easier things to do in the world, especially what we've taken a look at today. Like, the thing is, chaps, everybody thinks that I'm defending Ezra right now. I know it. I'm definitely not doing that. I am just merely exploring information. Obviously, it's easy to incriminate this person because they've already done that themselves. I'm going to conclude this video by saying that despite everything, despite your opinion and my opinion on Ezra Miller and despite my opinion on the other people involved in this situation, I think we need to just end this by saying that there is a victim in this situation. Whether the abuser is Ezra or the family members or other people, there is a victim and that is Gibson. And I know Gibson, if they do see this video, will probably hate me and despise everything that I'm saying. Please, for the love of God, to everyone, just know that I'm trying to build a, a, a picture here of what actually is the truth, you know? I'm trying to help my best and that's why I'm showing this stuff because I think that is only fair when it comes to support victim stories and here I'm just in general very confused and suspicious about what is actually going on here. I'll end this video by also saying that yes, despite everything, I also stand by the fact that a 29 year old has no business of an 18 year old. Now does that mean that a 29 year old can't know an 18 year old? Obviously not, but I don't think that there should be close personal friendships between people of such an age gap given the maturity levels and given the fact that Ezra allegedly did know of at least 
Gibson when Gibson was 12 years old. I think that is very sus behavior and I can completely understand in that aspect why a lot of people will turn their heads away from Ezra and say, you know what, that's a little bit too much for me. But not just with Gibson, I'm not going to ignore the fact that I've covered other isolated incidents in this video. The Iceland incident where Ezra clearly assaults somebody, in my opinion, is a very real incident that's happened, which is irredeemable and inexcusable. And there are obviously other charges out there to do with Ezra going around and just causing inexcusable chaos. We can't look past this. Ezra, in my opinion, is not a good person just based on this alone. Because if a random person who wasn't a famous millionaire committed assault once, we would instantly say, wow, you're a bad person. So why do we turn our heads away from Ezra Miller? Yes, the situation with Gibson and the Germany situation and the other situation involving the chair are all a little bit suspicious. But ultimately, I just can't pretend that everything here is just completely false. I definitely think that Ezra is not good. But yes, that is the ending of this video. Thank you so much for coming along. I know this was a, a weird, wild ride. Please, for the love of God, do not take what I've said in this video as me trying to be, I guess, a, a different opinion, somebody away from the unpopular opinion. For the most part, I do stand by the unpopular opinions on this case, but ultimately, I just can't deny that there is a lot of sussy-wussy things going on. But yes, please like this video, because I'm sure there are going to be some absolute fucking nut jobs here and in the comment section so please go and comment beans and uh yeah thanks for coming along please go and follow me on twitter instagram it's inaba inaba69 it's all there in the description and yeah that is the ending of this video thanks for coming along and i'll see you in the next one peace out i'm gonna go sleep for a week Hello, this is the post credit scene. At this point, you have just watched an Einaba video. Now, maybe you didn't, maybe you just clicked to the ending because you're a freak. Well, if you did that, congratulations. You can still do what I'm about to ask you to do because you've probably watched this video and now you are very depressed, very confused, and I can understand. So instead, go and watch this video, then go and watch this video, and go and watch this video, or at least watch one of them and come back to my Twitter account and tweet me, Fraser, I watched your videos. Because to be honest with you, I need people to watch my videos, but yeah. Uh, that's honestly all I'm here to say and um, please just continue to consume my content and give me your money Well, not your money, but the ads money. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Bye-bye Why are you still here? Go away